All right, you can turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 5. We are going to look at the difference between devil possession and sins of the flesh. And uh, you can, if you want to just go with emotions and I feel and I saw and I think and I, I believe and, you know, whatever, uh, you're not going to get too far. You're going to be deceived. God gave us His Word so that we would not be deceived. So what you want to do is you want to get Mark chapter 5, like this, and Galatians chapter 5. All right, interesting. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 9, is about real true devil possession and the marks of it. How they could tell that the guy was possessed with devils. Galatians chapter 5 is written to Christians. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Let's compare the two. Okay? Mark chapter 5. We'll start out with real true devil possession. And they came over unto the other side of the sea and into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come up out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, remember that one, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. And he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he said unto, er, excuse me, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Okay, and the Lord does cast him out then. But I want you to notice there are seven things there. All right, number one, they like being around tombs and dead bodies. They have an affinity for death and dying things and stuff like this. You want to get a good idea of who is possessed with devils around Halloween time. I don't know if it's this way in other countries, but here it is in America. You go past these houses and you'll see these people that's like this zombie apocalypse and there's like they'll spray blood on the side of the house and they got people hanging from trees and skeletons and skulls and zombie hands coming up out of the ground and stuff. What are you dealing with? Devils. I remember going out door to door the one time back when I was going to a Baptist church. We were out knocking doors, you know, soul winning. And I remember we went up onto this porch around Halloween time and they had this mannequin, like this body, this fake body, laying on the front porch with a head chopped off of it the heads rolled over to the side, and they had fake blood. This huge, it must have been three feet in diameter, big pool of, of blood laying there. This guy, you know, laying there, his head been cut off. What are you dealing with? Devils. Sick people. And, they, of course, they didn't want anything to do with salvation either when we tried to talk to them about it. Okay, so number one, you have they like being around death and, and dead things and like the, a lot of this gothic stuff and you know, whatever else. They like the black and the, they look, make, like, you know, making themselves look like they're dead. You know, people with skull and bones on, tattooed on them and skulls, this and death and death and death. Devils. Number two, unusual strength. They were binding him with chains. <clears throat> and he's just snapping the chains. Again, a lot of this, uh, there's these power teams that go around to these charismatic, you know, churches. And they're like doing all this stuff, ripping telephone books in half and breaking metal things and all this stuff, you know. And I was told, actually, that there was one a Bible-believing Christian went to one of these things and they started praying. And some of the guys couldn't do their feats of strength. And they were like, oh, something, something's a little wrong. I don't know what's going on or, you know. Devils That's what that is. <clears throat> and, you know, oh, they witnessed for Jesus. Yeah, they witnessed for another Jesus. The Jesus of the new versions. Number three, no one could tame him or talk sense into him. Okay? There again, another mark of devil possession. You get these people that are just totally unreasonable, and they're just they're nuts and they're crazy, and, and you can't reason with them. Um, you know, you'll, you'll get that. I've seen that with some Roman Catholics out on the street and things like that. You start talking, and they'll just go... They just go livid, and you try to say, but, I, and they're just screaming at you and yelling at you, cussing you out and everything else, threatening you. And, and you know, I've been screamed at and cussed at by some, a lot of people over the years. But, uh, you know, you'll get that. You'll get that from relatives sometimes. 
you'll get it. Well, they'll just they'll just snap, and that's and you and you try to talk to me. Just please, I'm just trying to explain it. Can I just show you what the Bible's? But I'm just you, know, you can't get a word in edgewise. What is it? Devils. I mean, I grant you, there's times pride and whatever, but a lot of times it's devils, especially when you're dealing with religious type of subjects. Okay. <clears throat> Number four, excessive crying. He was always in the tombs cutting himself and crying. All right? Uh, <clears throat> excessive crying. You'll get that. And you'll get these people, you know, the, you'll get these, uh, I've seen these preachers, and they'll go into this fake crying stuff and whatever else. Holy Spirit's not telling them to do that. You know, sometimes they'll do it, you know, to get the uh, donations up a little bit, you know, the offering and the offering plate, you know. But uh, it's not of the Lord. <clears throat> the next one is self-mutilation. He was always crying and cutting himself with stones. Again, self-mutilation. And uh, self-mutilation goes into another area that uh, people get really upset about. What is that? Piercings. Your nose, your lips, your eyebrows. And, you know, I'm going to put these, these in, silicone implants in my forehead to make it look like I got horns. And, and I'm going to put these huge big rings in my ears. You know, you see people, I saw somebody at the store the other day, up here, northern Maine, middle of nowhere, you know, and I see people at store and they got these big wooden rings through their earlobe. And I'm going, I saw a documentary years ago about, you know, Jim Elliott, the missionary, and how he was killed by these pagan people in South America and this tribe, and they had the wooden things in their ears. And I'm going, okay, um, you know, I know Dr. Ruckman used to have a saying, back to the Bible or back to the jungle. Well, we're going back to the jungle in this country, for sure. But what is it? Self-mutilation. Cutting. I actually went to a, a used uh, clothing store. They have them up here in, in northern Maine called Cubby Thrift Store. And I don't know if that's just a thing locally here. I, they didn't have them in Pennsylvania. So, but um, And I remember I went in, this woman was like tattoos and weird rings and stuff like this. And she went to give me my change, and she went like this. And when I looked, she had so many scars on her arm where she was cutting herself. And she was, like, really uncomfortable with me and everything else. And I, like, tried to be nice. Yeah, okay. You know, just... Devils. Devils. They'll cut themselves. And uh, what do you think tattoos are? Cuttings in your flesh. Don't even tell me the Holy Spirit's telling anyone to get a tattoo. I know better. <clears throat> so you have uh, self-mutilation. Number six, and here's the big one. They appear to be re religious and they worship Jesus. Hmm. And you say, oh, oh, come on. Read the text. See, here's how things work. When you're a Bible-believing Christian, you don't base your feeling or your, your truth on feelings and emotions. You say, what does the Bible say? And right here, verse 6 Mark chapter 5, verse 6 says, But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice. Okay, that's another thing. Um, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. It's kind of funny. I'm, you know, back and forth of this little Satanist healer. You know, he casts out devils, Chrysler Satan. And uh, and he's like, you know, Jesus is, is uh, you know, the Son of the Most High God, but He is not the Most High God. Well, that's the confession of a devil according to our text right there. What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God. That's the confession of a devil. If you want to see a devil speaking, watch Chris LaSalle's video. You're watching a devil. You say, oh, you, you didn't prove anything. It's right there, right in front of your face. He's a devil. But I find it interesting, too, that you get this uh, last Reformation cuckoo bird nonsense. Um, they're casting out devils after the people are baptized. No one does that in Scripture. Jesus didn't do it in there. Mark chapter 5. He didn't say, okay, let me take you down and baptize you, you know, and stuff. You have put your faith in Jesus. Okay, we'll baptize you. Now we'll cast the devils out. Jesus never did that. Okay? But the other thing that's important to remember is, when these uh, devils are cast out of people with this last Reformation stuff, it's like, how do you feel? How do you feel? 
thank you, Jesus. You know, and he's jumping up and down. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. What is that? Well, according to our text right there, um, it's a mark of devil possession. He's not taking devils out. He's putting them in. I'll say that one more time. These fake healers, Torben Sundergaard, Chris Lasala, any of them. I just picked two of those little Pharisees. These fake healers are imparting devils. They're putting them in, not taking them out. That's why you see these people, you know, oh, praise the Lord, praise Jesus. Oh, they're worshiping Jesus. Just like our text said that the guy with devils did. And notice it says there, cried with a loud voice, another mark of devil possession. They worship Jesus with a loud voice. Do you understand? But I, I, I shouldn't be submilitant. I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak against them. I shouldn't call them names. No, I should just be nice and friendly and kind to people who are damning others to hell. Some of you people really make me sick. I'll tell you what. You know, don't be so cruel. Don't be so angry. Do you understand what hell is? Do you understand? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Do you understand what happens if I keep my mouth shut? And if I just say, oh, well, you know, and just... They're damning people to hell. They're preying on the sick. It doesn't make you mad. It doesn't fill you with anger. It filled Jesus with anger. What's your problem? Oh, I'm getting mad again. Yeah, deal with it. I'm a man. I'm not some stinking little sissy. Oh, I hate to see you get angry. Then go watch something else. I'm going to get angry. I'm going to get mad when I see people going to hell. And if you don't get angry about stuff like that, then I question your salvation. What are you, just totally dead? Spiritually? We shouldn't get angry at people going to hell. You know, that people, you know, false teachers sending people to hell. That shouldn't make us mad. We should come to them in a spirit of love. <laughs> yeah. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Now let's, let's make the contrast here, okay? We had devil possession here in Mark 5. Let's go to see the sins of the flesh, okay? This is a big thing. We'll go through this. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, the kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship with the Lord or the millennial kingdom. This is written to Christians. You say, well, huh? A Christian can do those things in Galatians chapter 5? Absolutely. Absolutely. You say, a Christian can get involved in witchcraft? Yeah. Feminism is witchcraft. Can Christian women get into feminism? Start falling into that thing? Yeah, they can. And all the other stuff in through there. Paul's writing that stuff to warn Christians. But see, here's the point I need to make. These charismatic wingnuts, when they come out and they say, you know, I cast out devils from people. The, and you look at them and you look into this thing. You have a devil of lust. I'm going to cast it out. You have a devil of, of uh, eating jelly donuts. We've got to cast that out. You have a devil of uh, the devil of, of uh, picking your nose or something like that. All these weird little, the devil of pornography. You know, its name is such and such. The devil of hatred. The devil of the... Where's this stuff at in Scripture? You know, when I read my King James Bible, I read here in Mark chapter 5 that these people, that are this guy that's possessed with devils, acts like a modern charismatic. Weird, isn't it? Where in the Bible do I read anything about the, the devil of... of does Paul say, you know, the devil of adultery and the devil of fornication, the devil of unclean? He says it's the lust of the flesh. They're manifest. It's manifest. You can see it all around you. Christians struggle with sin. That doesn't mean that they're devil-possessed. It's a lot of nonsense. All right? So, you know, 
I could keep going on and saying a lot more on this whole subject, but the whole point is don't fall for this whole thing of they're casting devils out and stuff like this. And again, you know, another little point I want to make here. If you look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll go there. Go there to... Uh, I've quoted this thing many, many, many times because it's a very, very important scripture in your King James Bible. But uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, excuse me, chapter 11, uh, verse 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, like the charismatic healers. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You know what's so funny to me? These guys come out and they say, who are you to judge me? You know, look at the fruits of my ministry. Look at all the people I've cast devils out. You know what they're doing? They're saying, I'm going to be judged by my works. They're absolutely right. I find that to be very interesting. They are the ones that are devil-possessed. They're worshiping Jesus. Why? Because Mark chapter 5 has a guy that's worshiping Jesus. Legion. Read it. Read it. You know? Well, I, I came to this healer and, and he took away my, my, the devil of lust. And now I no longer lust. Okay, but what's your problem now? See? They'll take away the devil of lust and then they get the devil of uh, gluttony. Or the devil of money or mammon or something like this. And it just, they, they get, this devil needs to be cast out. And then, the, you know, they're always having the devils cast out of them and stuff like this. But they can sure praise Jesus. Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't even realize it. Realize it that the, the ministers of Satan appear as the ministers of righteousness. They have no idea about stuff like that. They think, I'm safe with somebody that worships Jesus. Well, you don't read the Bible. It's a shame. And I make these videos because I care about people. I want people to come out of the deception of these modern charismatic uh, Satanists. Yeah, yeah, people, oh, you're saying you're calling so many people Satanists. Yeah, we're living in the end times, you know. You know, I mean, uh, I guess I should be politically correct according to some of the losers out there. I'm not going to be politically correct. You know, well, I'm getting very angry. Then watch something else. Okay? <laughs> you know, and I get this thing too, you know, well, uh, such and such pastor, you know, the, this pastor, he doesn't act the way that you do. Yeah, because the pastors get their stinking little Babel buildings where they can be insulated in there with all the little people that get along with them. And if somebody's a problem, they kick them out, ask them to leave their fellowship and stuff like this. And they won't dare open their mouth about controversial subjects. They might hit a few here and there, but there's a bunch of stuff that's just off limits. This makes me sick, you know. I have never shunned to declare unto anybody the whole counsel of God. You know, I've never once said, okay, this is too controversial. I'm not bringing this thing out. And I get kicked. And then when I try to fight back, it's like, don't, don't fight back. You know, we're just going to come. We're going to stab you in the back, Brian. And you don't, you're not allowed to fight back. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't fall for that. So uh, if you're out there and you've been deceived by this whole thing of uh, the devils being cast out and all this other stuff, uh, you better repent real quickly and get away from that stuff. Um, if they're talking to you about, you know, if you're having problems with your flesh and you're, you're saying, boy, I'm really struggling over this or whatever, go to Galatians chapter 5 and read down through there and say, oh, let the Holy Spirit convict you. You don't need to have devils cast out of you if you're saved. All right, you're not going to have devils in you if you're saved. You're going to have problems with your flesh. Read Romans chapter 7. All right, you will have problems with your flesh, but you don't have devils in you for crying out loud. All right, and these people that come along and they, they praise the Lord and praise Jesus after they've had devils cast out. Like I said, the devils were cast in. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.